On September 2nd, 1991, I left St. Vincent to get home to Dominica, making a stop on St. Lucia along the way. So, as you look at this scenery from the airplane on my 1991 camcorder, I'm going to read some descriptions by Kay Shoker from her book, Caribbean, The Outdoor Traveler's Guide. So, right now, um, I'm on I'm looking at St. Lucia from the airplane. <laughs> and St. Lucia scenery is so grand that it belies the island's small size. Almost every turn in the road reveals spectacular verdant landscapes alive with birds and colored by flamboyant and frangipani and trees laden with exotic fruit. This scene right here <clears throat> is of the pitons. These ancient volcanic spikes Petite Piton, which you'll see next, and Gros Piton, which you're looking at now, are among the most remarkable natural features in the Caribbean. The Pitons are strikingly beautiful from several viewpoints, whether one approaches them from the north or south. And no place offers a better vantage point than Dachin. The Pitons bracket a steep, thickly forested hillside that drops to a beautiful deep water bay with a small palm-fringed beach at its north end, directly south of Petit Piton. The geological formation of the Pitons is obscure. According to one theory, they are the remains of a volcanic crater ridge, most of which has fallen into the sea. Another holds that they are extruded volcanic plugs. The Pitons are exceedingly steep and unstable, with frequent landslides, and their vegetation must survive in very shallow soil. The next scene that you'll quickly see is of the Hess oil tanks, uh, one of the industrial areas of St. Lucia. And then we speed off to Castries Harbor. Castries is a busy port since the 19th century and it's also the country's capital. It's situated on the northwest coast along a deep natural harbor sheltered by an amphitheater of green hills. One reason Britain and France fought so hard for its possession was the port's strategic value. Pictured here is Rat Island, and then we move on to Pigeon Island National Park. Inhabited since the time of the Arawaks, Pigeon Island on the northwest coast was a pirate's lair in the early days of exploration. A strategic fort of the British in the 18th century, a quarantine station, a whaling station, and a U.S. naval station. Today, it is a park.
five miles south of the capital of Dominica, the fishing village of Soufriere sits on a wide scenic bay, bounded on the south by a rocky peninsula that ends at Scott's Head, which you are looking at right now. It's a promontory overlooking looking the Martinique Channel, where the Caribbean meets the Atlantic. From the summit of Scott's Head, there are great views of Martinique to the south and Soufriere Bay to the north. The island's capital, Roseau, is situated at the mouth of the Roseau River on the southwest coast. It is a typical West Indian port, looking a bit newer than most, since it had to be rebuilt after Hurricane David destroyed 80% of the town. At the seafront, the old market, once the slave block, has been renovated to house craft shops and a tourist information bureau. Of all the islands in the Caribbean, Dominica tops the list for adventurous nature lovers. Covered from end to end with spectacular tropical scenery, this gift of nature is dominated by towering green mountains, jungle thick with rainforests and crisscrossed by rivers and streams. Within its boundaries are five ecological zones, each with its own flora and fauna. Dominica, the largest of the Windward Islands, is the most mountainous of the volcanic Lesser Antilles, with peaks reaching almost 5,000 feet. Evidence of continuing volcanic activity abounds throughout the island, which is 20 miles long. It is washed by calm Caribbean waters on the west and pounded by Atlantic waves on the east.